It's been described as one of the finest organs in the country, installed by William Hill in 1894. And last time on Pipe Watch, we saw this instrument played by an organist quite unlike those it's been used to over the past 120 years, an electronic one. Now that the robot and robot master Ben Trenchard have done their work and the original tone and pitch of the organ has been recorded, it's time for the organ builders to move in and the organ pipes to move out. So let's continue our journey, heading behind the scenes on the project of a lifetime, in the third instalment of Pipe Watch. As director of music Stephen Grahl has told us in the past, there are 5,286 pipes in Peterborough Cathedral Organ. Fortunately for the organ builders, not all of those pipes had to take a trip to their workshop in Durham. This is one of the ranks uh, from the Great Cornet, and you can see there's all sorts of pipes that have disappeared. And what we've been doing over the last three days, we've retuned the organ to the flatter pitch so we can establish what pipes need to be lengthened and what pipes don't. And each pipe in this section of the organ, this is the great section, each pipe has a little tuning collar on here and they sit on the pipe and you can alter the pitch of the pipe. So if I push this down and give it a blow, you get that note. And if I move it up a little bit, that's almost a semitone. So what we've done is we've gone around the whole organ and retuned it where possible. So a pipes of about one foot and shorter, we've been able to get all of the tuning latitude just on the, the tuning collars here. So all these little pipes that you can see around me here, um, or all the pipes that having retuned the organ, we've, we've deemed not necessary to lengthen. So all the holes, they're all in crates over west of me here to be dropped down out of the Triforium. Dropping pipes metres down from the Cathedral Triforium to the floor below is no mean feat, even for those who work on organs for a living. It's quite a difficult thing when you walk in. I worked at this uh, organ about 10 years ago. Uh, did I ever think I would be doing anything like this? No, I don't think so. Uh, me as team leader get involved quite early days of how we're going to take things apart, how we're going to do things as safely and carefully but also plan the work. And planning that work is everything from writing the risk assessments to packing the pipes. What you have here is our platform, which we've lifted every single pipe on into these crates here. We brought an approximate of 48 crates. Um, we believe that we've used 43 of the crates, which is quite a larger number than what we thought. We've also used a lot of uh, trays, which are actually look like bread trays but we can put the smaller pipes in and make sure that they're packed in quite tightly so they don't uh, rub against each other or rattle around or we don't lose any of course. Uh, so those are nicely packed and those are lowered down um, in, a, in a crate as well. So what we tend to use is uh, what we call a sling. Now this sling has been tested and we check these every day before we use them. So each crate, pipe, it's all been transferred to the floor using these. We balance it, wrap it around the pipe or the crate. I have been wearing a harness and I'm tied to the scaffold, so I physically can't go over the scaffold, which is a good thing. We have weighed quite a few of these things and some of the units that we've sent down in crates is actually uh, over a quarter of a tonne. So when we bundle everything together, it does get quite weighty. Even single objects has been now, uh, nearly 200 kilograms. So, a lot what we lift is delicate and we've got to be careful, so it's all marked and it's all carefully that we can all come back and put it back in. And as if one enormous set of scaffolding wasn't enough, another had to be erected for arguably the most famous part of the organ, its case. Here we are on the great organ again, right behind the, the front pipes. And on this organ, the front pipes are made up of the great 16-foot double open diapason. And the only ones that don't speak or the three small flats at the top of the case. They're, they're what we call sham pipes or dummy pipes. Um, but these ones in the lower level here, which have these what we call windows cut in the back, um, these are for tuning purposes because the, the pipes here are what we call architectural length so that they fit the case nicely. Um, so the pipes are actually longer than what they need to be for their tuning position. So they have these windows cut in the back, which makes the pipe think it's shorter than it is in, in reality. And these have all been uh, tuned as flat as they possibly go with these little windows closed right up. So we'll have to fill these windows in a bit like that and put a new uh, tongue in so we can tune them. And that'll bring us all down to pitch and save me keep my hand here for the next 100 years. Luckily, no organ builders have been trapped in the case with their hands over a pipe. 
but their handiwork of a different kind is ongoing. Join us next time to get up close and personal with the organ pipes as they're lengthened at the workshop in Durham, when Pipe Watch continues. Mm -hmm.